Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today my partner John Coleman and I are going to be speaking with Michelle Fabrica, our love and relationship coach. Michelle, great to see you again. Um, last time we were together, Michelle, we were talking about uh, the art of effective complaining, and it, and you were referencing a book by uh, Guy Winch. Do I have that name correct? Called yeah. the Squeaky Wheel, uh, and a lot of great uh, a great information in there from his book that you shared with us. But we touched on, just briefly touched on the other side of it, which is not complaining, not getting it out. But what do you do when when you're receiving a complaint? And you mentioned that that he has that in his book. He, he references that. But let's talk about that now. I think that's important because I know when somebody, you know, complains to me, my first reaction is I get very defensive. What? Me? No, you, you know. And so what are what are the techniques for receiving a complaint? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, really important. And this is a skill to develop for all of us. I really think so. So, um, you know, the first step is really just to listen fully to the complaint. And um, maintaining eye contact is very important. And don't interrupt. So you want to let them fully express themselves. And part of the reason you do that is that if they're a little upset, you help them kind of get it out. And if you interrupt, you just kind of make them maybe more upset and more angry. Because yeah. it, it, it doesn't sound it... like you're listening. Right. If, if you interrupt if, someone. Yeah. If you interrupt, I can see it could be interpreted as uh, confrontational. Yeah. Or you're Argumentative. cutting them off in the middle. Uh, um, we're interrupting each other. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ba yeah. Basically, it's giving them an opportunity uh, to uh, to use a phrase we use as the last one to vent their spleen at you. <laughs> and then just don't take it. You may want to eventually take it personally, but assume that something's really bothering them, whether they're right or wrong. And as long as they get it out and they get that opportunity to get it out, maybe there's an opportunity to have a dialogue about it for you to tell them, oh, I didn't understand that. I'll try to do better. Or, well, this is why I think that this is why I do that. And quite frankly, you know the crap out of me. So, I mean, that may <laughs> eventually be the response. Yeah, well, hopefully we're not coming back with our own complaint because then, you know, then we're kind of escalating things. But but yeah, so basically the first first is just to listen fully and the eye contact thing is really important. Now, I want to highlight something he talked about in the book. This was fascinating to me. So there were two researchers who measured how long the members of a couple gazed at one another during a complaint, okay? And and the, the interesting thing is the longer a husband gazed at his wife while she complained, the higher the marital satisfaction of both members of the couple. Interesting. And Interesting. how long a woman gazed at her husband didn't seem to make a difference to the marital satisfaction. So note to all those men out there, um, to maintain eye contact when you're, if you have a female partner, your female partner is uh, complaining and bringing something to you. Yeah. Uh, do you suppose that's true in in a business relationship? Somebody complains? Is um, it, do you I think that holds true? Well, I think that the eye contact is really about fully receiving the other person, right? Like if you start complaining to me and I'm just like, you know, I'm like, okay, figuring out my next answer, figuring yeah. out how I'm going to like, you know, fire back. It's like, yeah. I'm really giving you the space to, it's like, you know, when your child comes with you, they're upset about something, you know, we're really fed by the gaze. We humans need that gaze mm. to feel connected. And so that is a way to show that you're being, you want to be understanding, you want to be supportive, you want to, you know, and it might be like things they're saying might be like, oh my God, where here she goes again, Blah, you know, whatever, whatever might be going on inside, just to listen and to let them finish gives you mm. time to, regulate over here right so that's, that's the other yeah. advantage is just it helps you come to like finish let them finish and then once you uh listen fully the the next thing to do and you know we've talked many people have heard of this concept of like active listening but you want to paraphrase back what they said you want to make sure you understand what exactly the complaint is 
Oh, you know, that's important. That yeah. Late, or is that I didn't call you that I was late? It was, da, da, da. you know, there's always little nuances there. And if we don't know precisely what it is, you know, we can't change it. Or even if we know precisely what, what it is, we can't always make a change, but we can at least understand what yeah. they might need. So, so, so that's the next step. So that that step is is uh, both uh, satisfactory to the complainer. In other words, I've heard you. Exactly. Uh, you you know that I've heard you because I'm telling you what you said. Right. But it's also clarify clarifying. I, do you mean to tell me that what you mean is blah blah blah, or are you saying something else? That that sounds like an important step. Yeah, yeah. And it also kind of like buys you some time to like, before you have to come up with your answer, it gives yeah. you a little time, you know? Yeah. And all this giving us time is key to, you know, okay, I can take another breath here. I can really make right. sure I understand mm -hmm. it before I have to say or do anything different, right? Yeah. But then the last step is to validate the feelings, right? So, and before you respond, right? But like, right. oh, wow, I can see this is really upsetting to you. And like, I noticed that this is really important to you or whatever. And it doesn't yeah. mean that you're kind of um, admitting your own like guilt or that it's your fault, but you can still notice that when someone's upset, they're upset. Yeah. Feelings are always valid. Like yeah, well, you right, might well, not whether understand them. It's a legitimate complaint or not, they're upset. And you're exactly. giving them the courtesy of listening to them. And then, exactly. And, and, but I think the most important thing, and I think John uh, brought it up, it's something common to all of us. If somebody begins to criticize you, sometimes it's a trigger and you just want to, you know, I don't want to hear it. But rather right. than do that, if you just take it, like you say, take a deep breath and let them empty it out. Okay. So, yeah, and then, yeah. And then recognize that you've heard it. And then you may not want to resolve it or you may not agree with them, but at least they know they've been heard. Right, right. And I actually just want to note our, that you use the word criticize. And, you know, we're not talking about criticism and maybe because sometimes and I think that's I'm glad you said that because some people sort of link or, you know, conflate criticism and complaining. They're really not the same thing. Right. Um, it's we're basically pointing out something that impacts us to the other person. We're yeah. not like telling them they're you know, a horrible person or, uh, you know, something about their character or the kind of person they are. I mean, that is not what we're talking about. Those are not useful ever, really, yeah. <laughs> to, to criticize. In fact, that's one of the, you know, four horsemen of the apocalypse that are relationship killers that we've talked about in other videos, mm. criticism. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, com but complaints are, that's a whole different animal. Yeah. Well, you know, um, you mentioned uh, uh, criticizing and taking the time to listen. Um, when you listen, if you if you really do listen, it gives you the time to analyze what the problem is, you know, or what they think the problem is. Mm -hmm. So here I am receiving a complaint from somebody. I may not agree with them, you know, or but I need to understand what they're saying so I can analyze it and say, if I'm going to answer it or whenever I answer it, I can say what I agree with or don't agree with or what I'm going to do about it or not going to do about it. Or, I mean, you have to analyze what their problem is. You have to understand it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and this can be a moment where you like, wow, uh, thanks for bringing that to me. I mean, he doesn't talk about this in the book, but, you know, thanks for bringing this to me. Um, I, I want to think about that for a while. Or, yeah. you know, this is not necessarily, you know, you could respond in the moment if you want to or able to, but... It right. doesn't have to, you know, it's like, thanks, I, I need some time or whatever. So there, there's options here, right? But the right. point is that you fully receive their complaint sandwich that they brought to you. You know, we talked yeah. about that in the other um, video. And um, and then you go from there. But, but the key thing is that some understanding, just some way that what you said or did or didn't say or do impacted them. And there's been some some shared understanding here. Yeah. So uh, the word comes to mind, gracious comes mm. to mind. A as, a, as a person who's got to receive, because you don't generally have a choice, receive this complaint, I should receive, I should be gracious. I should acknowledge really that this person is putting themselves out telling me something 
important to them. Yeah. And I should be gracious about it, whether I acknowledge it in terms of I'm going to do anything about it <laughs> or not. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I should at least accept it graciously. Yeah. 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 That's and also, I would say that right? I'm glad that we had this conversation because basically, this is just the other side of the coin. If yes. you're going to bother to uh, uh, create that sandwich that you're talking about, that, that guy was talking about, to maybe better to live more effectively to deliver a, a complaint that you might have, uh, yeah. then the same way is that you should hope, even if the other person isn't doing it that way, acknowledge that they have to them a valid complaint and then receive it right. and let them get it out before you re respond to it. So it's really the other side of the coin and the way you can pack it, you can control your response as opposed to being triggered and not having a good outcome, no matter what their complaint is, unless you're going to say, oh, you're absolutely right. I should never do that again. That's not normally the way these things work. There's shades of gray. So thank mm -hmm. you for bringing up this other, the other side of receiving. It's not always better to give than to receive. But we, <laughs> <laughs> because in, you, in the case here's, of the, Michelle, here's, here's to everybody who has to receive a complaint. May all your complaints arrive in a sandwich, like we discussed <laughs> in the last video, as opposed to no sandwich, because it's a lot easier to deal with a sandwich. Yeah. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Again, great book, a great reference to a, a very interesting and useful book. We appreciate that. We'll have the, uh, the name of the book and the author in our uh, information details below the video. So... They can uh, they can find that book I'm sure on Amazon, uh, and it sounds like a very important read. Yeah, yeah, and there's a TED talk out there that he did about uh, complaining too, which is which is great. Great. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.